So uh, the origin of the ELEA idea goes back to the years 2004, 5, and 6. Uh, and it had three major components to it. Uh, one is that the whole topic of globalization uh, has in a way fascinated me since I was a student. I mean, I, I, I already then thought that globalization is the mega trend uh, of our generation and probably the next as well. Uh, and I kind of uh, recognize that globalization is an incredibly uh, rewarding and promising uh, process, but also a very difficult one, challenging one, which leaves uh, winners and losers. And if we don't, if we are not careful uh, with it, and particularly not careful with uh, addressing those that uh, do not benefit from globalization, uh, that globalization will not uh, yield its benefits in a sustainable way. And so that was the first. Uh, driver, it was really an ethical question, uh, because if you're born in Switzerland and if you have the privilege uh, to make the career that I had uh, um, been fortunate to make uh, in the Swiss Financial Center in these years, uh, you're obviously on the winning side of globalization. And so the real ethical impetus was uh, to share some of these globalization gains with those that uh, did historically, for whatever reason, not have access to globalization opportunities, hence the name ELEA uh, Foundation for Ethics and Globalization. The second driver uh, was indeed a passion for poverty economics. I mean, I'm an economist by training uh, from St. Gallen. I uh, already then uh, kind of uh, selected uh, my kind of uh, in-depth deep dive in uh, poverty economics uh, and uh, emerging markets. And I always felt it should be the noble purpose of an economist to actually understand uh, why there is poverty and what you can do about it. And I must say it was great satisfaction, as I think for any economist in that field, to see a uh, Nobel Prize uh, last year awarded for the first time uh, to empirical poverty researchers. And the third had to do with uh, life planning. Uh, on one hand, financially, uh, because I made much more money than I ever thought I would make. Uh, and so the question is what you do with the money, but at least as much also life energy planning, because I was fortunate to become CEO uh, at a very young age, at 44 years. Uh, and uh, as we take good care of our body, we have a uh, good reason to live up to 90 and above. And so the question is, what do you do with your life energy once you are no longer a CEO? And uh, uh, it, uh, it's clear that CEOs of large companies last between five and seven years. That's it. And all this was actually done uh, up to 2006. So there was no financial crisis yet. And I had no clue that uh, that scenario would already materialize uh, a year later. <laughs>